Chef Diana from Lancaster Local Provisions. Uh, today on my cook-along we're going to be making spring carbonara with spring garlic and I'm using uh, radiator repertory pasta. So what's wonderful about pasta dishes, I make them all the time because they're quick and easy and you can make dinner or lunch in like 10 minutes. So what I have is I have my pasta water already boiling. I'm going to turn it back up. I'm going to give it a nice dose of salt. You know, people say you want your pasta water to taste of the sea. Do the salt content that you're comfortable with, but whatever you're cooking your pasta in, it will absorb some of that flavor, so it will actually salt the pasta without you having to add extra salt. And I'm going to just cut over my beautiful radiator pasta from Vera Pasta. So I'm ready to do that. So how we're gonna do this is the pasta's gonna cook for five minutes while I cook the bacon and um, the spring garlic for my carbonara. So I have a pot or a pan, I'm sorry, over medium high heat. I'm just gonna put a glug of olive oil in there. Or no, sunflower oil, you can use olive oil. I prefer sunflower if you watch me. And I'm gonna pop in about a half a pound of pasta. I'm making uh, dinner for two. And I'm gonna put my five minute timer so you're gonna cook it to al dente, and then we're gonna actually cook it in the pan with eggs and cheese to sort of finish everything off. So I have my oil, nice and hot, and I'm gonna be using bacon today. So we have this beautiful country bacon from uh, Rooster Street Butcher. I have four pieces. If you're making this for one, you can have two pieces. Um, you can also use pancetta. You can use cooked ham, but I prefer using bacon, something with a little bit of fat. We're gonna cook the fat out making um, the bacon or pancetta very crispy, and then we're gonna use that oil or that fat to coat the pasta, and it's just gonna make it really luscious. So I've cut my bacon up, and now we're just gonna cook it until it starts to get crispy for a couple minutes. And what I'm, I'm just gonna help the, the bacon pieces come apart a little bit more. So if you cut them into what we call like lardon, just sort of strips. This is great. I mean, Gabriel does this all the time to top on, on top of dishes. This is great if you want bacon on your salad, make them sort of big chunk pieces. And they crisp up really nicely. And they become something that's part of the dish, not buried in the dish. This is like really upscale bacon bits. So that's really what carbonara is. It's sort of you get this, um, you get this sort of quirky, yumminess mixed with the lusciousness of egg. And why I'm choosing to make this recipe today is um, back when I was like 14 or 15, my mom and my aunt, we took the train up to New York City and of course we were walking around and went to Little Italy for lunch. And it was like the most amazing lunch. It was one of the first times I'd ever been to the city. Um, we were on you know, Mulberry Street. Now there's only maybe a block left of Little Italy. But I'll always remember eating carbonara in Little Italy with my mom and my aunt on that fateful sunny day. And so that's sort of my inspiration today. Um, so I'm crisping my bacon up. Of course, I want it to crisp a little faster. Next time, I will have them all pieced apart before I start cooking. <laughs> so um, when you look at a lot of carbonara recipes, it's usually made with like a spaghetti, sort of a long linguine pasta. I like using a shorter pasta for the carbonara. So where did I put my, oh, my pasta is here. So um, the radiator pasta is really great for this because it had, it, it looks like, a, like an old style radiator, but it has these great crevices that just like soak up all the yummy, whatever sauce you're using. And because we're making like a really yummy sort of egg custard at the end, um, it's just gonna be so good. And then it's sort of the same size as the chunks of, um, bacon, and for me, I like a shorter pasta with my carbonara. I'm really more of a shorter pasta kind of gal. So our other sort of star ingredient is our spring garlic. I'm obsessed with spring garlic right now. It has a very short season. It's related to a leek. It sort of looks like a leek or a scallion or a young um, onion, but it has a real intense garlicky flavor. So I'm gonna use one stalk. Actually, I might use two stalks because I really love it. But one stock is the equivalent of like two cloves of garlic. So if you don't have spring garlic, 
or green garlic, um, you can use regular plain old garlic, that's fine. So I'm just going to rip off the first layer. And then I'm just going to dice it into sort of rounds. You can dice it finer, but I like the texture that that's going to provide to our dish. And once our bacon gets crispy, I'm going to take it out of the pan and we're going to cook our garlic in there. So it's starting to get nice and crispy. I want it pretty crispy. I don't want a sort of a rubbery bacon happen. All right, so my pasta has been cooked to al dente. I'm going to reserve about a quarter cup of my cooking liquid and set that aside. And I'm just going to drain this out so it doesn't keep cooking. And then we'll add it in at the end. And it will have, it, right now it's pretty al dente. And we're going to get it, stop it sort of from cooking, and then we'll just sort of cook it at the end. So my bacon's almost getting crispy. So I've diced up my beautiful spring garlic here. I'm gonna do another one, but I'm gonna reserve my sprigs for a stock I'm gonna make later today. So I'm just gonna set those aside. My bacon's almost where I want it to be, but I'm gonna cut my other spring garlic. Now, I mean, Johnny and I were talking about this earlier. He usually puts peas in his carbonara. We're still not quite in spring. This, like, spring garlic is really the first taste of... Uh, I, my favorite is to put asparagus, when you have, like, fresh asparagus. That really brightens it. Because this is a pretty luscious dish. You know, like, it has, it has a lot of fat going on in a really good way. But it can feel heavy sometimes. Okay, so my bacon is looking really good. It's not over crispy. I don't want it to be like I could snap it in half, but I'm getting some really nice color. And I think we're about 30 seconds away from getting it to where I want it to be. So I'm gonna take my paper towels. I very rarely use paper towels in the kitchen, but when I'm making bacon, I always use paper towels. This is from a great company called Who Gives a Crap. We get all of our paper products for our home from them and they donate um, toilets and other resources to people all around the world. So check them out. It's all made out of bamboo. These are bamboo, not um, tree forested paper towels. So I want to keep my bacon fat in here. Maybe I should grab a better spoon. Our kitchen's under construction still, so I don't know where anything is. I'm just going to try to get as much of the bacon out without losing all this beautiful fat collected. Oh my god, this is going to be so good. Okay, so I have my fat. I'm going to take it down to medium. That sounds really bad, but you know, fat's delicious and good in moderation. So I'm going to take my spring garlic. And we're just going to let that cook for about a minute until it gets really fragrant. And in the meantime, I'm going to take my two eggs. Now, people, I think, are always um, afraid of making carbonara because it's like, oh my god, you're putting raw egg into something. The pasta and the bacon and all of this stuff is going to be hot enough that it will just slightly cook the egg. So you're not eating raw egg, you're just eating a very lightly cooked egg. So just think of it as more of a, like a poached egg situation. Now I forgot my one rule, which is to always add pepper to my bacon. So I'm going to just add a little pepper on top. I'm going to add pepper into here. I'm not going to salt the pasta at all because we salted the water. And the cheese that we're using, the lanchego, and then the bacon is already really salty. So if you've watched my cooking videos before, you've seen me use the lanchego cheese. This is our local cheese from Deglay Farm, which we are just obsessed with. And I use this instead of Parmesan in all of our dishes. I haven't found a local Parmesan I really love. But this is a manchego style cheese, which is a similar style cheese. It's a hard, salty cheese. And it's going to give you the same effect that a Parmesan would. If you want to use Parmesan, go ahead. That's fabulous. I'm going to take this down. I'm going to have about a half a, a quarter cup of cheese in here. Not too much. We'll put more cheese on top. Just enough to sort of come together with the egg. Okay. And then I'm just going to whisk this together. 
and that's going to be our egg mixture. Okay, so this has been cooking for about a minute or two. It's starting to smell garlicky. I don't want anything to get too sort of crispy. I'm getting some nice color on my greens. Now it's show time. Okay, so I'm going to take my heat off. You're doing this all with the heat off. Then I'm going to pour my pasta in. I'm going to pour some of my reserved cooking liquid in. About two tablespoons. Actually, I lied. I'm going to do this part first. And then I'm going to take it off the heat <laughs> and add the um, yummy egg in. So I'm just going to let the pasta absorb a little bit of this yummy bacon water thing. It's not going to taste watery. It's just cutting through the, the fat a little bit. And this is something, this is such a great technique for pasta. So many people make pasta then pour the sauce on top, where then the pasta doesn't really get coated with the sauce, whatever sauce you're making. This way, you're not overcooking your pasta, and then it has a chance to absorb the flavors that are in the pan. So okay, my pasta has been absorbing all this yumminess for about a minute now. I'm gonna add just a touch of salt, not too much, like a little baby, baby pinch just to brighten everything up. And now I'm gonna remove it from the heat. So I'm gonna pour my bacon in, how about that? Remove it from the heat. I'm gonna pour in my egg. Move this around. So again, the egg is being cooked, but it's not, we're not making scrambled eggs, and we're just sort of coating our pasta in this really, really yummy, yummy sauce. I love this. I'm so excited about this dish. See how good it looks? It just looks so luscious. Word of the day. We had my cousin over for dinner last night, and he like had never heard me say luscious, so he obviously is not watching my cook-along videos. So there you go. Look how beautiful that looks. Okay, you want to serve this warm, so I'm going to plate this up for us. My two beautiful plates. Oop. If I had the right apparatuses, I would be spooning this into my bowl, but... I don't know where anything is in my kitchen right now. Don't like it. And then to add a little brightness, I'm just going to, we have some beautiful basil in the marketplace this week. So I'm just gonna chop up a couple basil leaves. I love basil, it adds, you know, you think of it as really sweet, which it is, but it adds a nice savory flavor to dishes. So you can add whatever herb you have on hand. Um, parsley would be really yummy. Basil would be good. I can't wait for us to have our outdoor herbs soon. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of this on top, make sure it's really pretty and appetizing. And then just a small layer, more cheese, because who doesn't love cheese? I'm going to use a microplane, which just has a smaller tooth than what I was using earlier to grate the cheese, just so it's a little bit of a finer presentation. And then voila, what, that was like maybe 10 minutes that we made lunch and dinner in. So here's our beautiful spring garlic carbonara. I hope you try it. I hope you're not afraid of carbonara. It's so delicious. And I wish you could be here to smell this. So again, thank you so much. Make our carbonara. It's so delicious. I'm Chef Diana and check out more recipes at chefdianaskitchen.com. Happy cooking!